All right, so today I'm gonna be going over my uh, Skate 3 mods and settings and all that, just to show y'all how to um, be running your Skate 3 like me, how to have your own skater on Party Play, your own name on Party Play, um, make your game look, you know, normal instead of all bright and sh get yourself all nice and modded up and uh, your game run as smooth as possible. These settings might not work exactly for your PC because every PC is different unless you have like my exact specs, which I doubt. I have a Ryzen 7 5800X, so these settings might not work for your CPU, but they work good for like mid to high end Ryzen CPUs and also like mid to high end Intel CPUs. So I thought that these uh, settings would be more broad for all those groups because I feel like that's the majority of what people have nowadays. So first off, actually we're going to close up the uh, RPCS3 emulator and go enable the debug menu. What you got to do to do that is go into your RPCS3 folder and go into GUI configs, this folder right here, and then head into current settings.ini. If it prompts you with something, just open it in notepad, but if it, uh, you know, if that doesn't automatically open in notepad, then what you want to do next is scroll down until you get to meta show debug tab. It's going to say false right here. You want to change it to true. Just literally delete it and put, you know, put true. No capitals, no nothing, just put true. And then make sure you save it, close it out. And then uh, once you open up RPC history again, it should have a debug menu when you go into your custom configuration. If you don't have a custom configuration already for your skate three, all you gotta do is right click it and then go create custom config. Mine says change custom config, but you know, it'll say create if you don't have one already. And then um, go to create one or change it if you already have one. Um, and yeah, copy these settings. So my CPU tab, I have PPU, decoder on recompiler, SPU decoder on recompiler as well, approximate X flow, I checked at enable SPU loop detection, this for some reason I can't check but I don't think I'm supposed to anyway, uh, SPU block size safe, SPU threads I put on two because if I put it higher it starts making it run slowly, so that was something I experienced, thread scheduler, uh, operating system, I don't know if this is any different than like the normal settings but this is what I have, for GPU this is kind of where it gets interesting and where you kind of probably change the most settings. Make sure your render is on Vulkan because it uses like it, it's a uh, it's just a better render. It renders out your games faster and makes them smoother. Sometimes you might want to use OpenGL if Vulkan doesn't work for you but you no know, either way it should work. Graphics device make sure it's on your graphics card or your best graphics rendering thing in your PC if you have <laughs> integrated graphics on your CPU that are better than your graphics card which is rare but hey some people have shitty graphics cards you know choose whatever is best uh aspect ratio 16 by 9 always frame limit 60 um and i'll get into why anisotropic filter i always keep on auto disabled anti-aliasing because it makes the game run better and it looks fun uh z call accuracy you want to keep it on relaxed because you know if you put it higher the uh game starts running a little shittier. Res, I always have it on 120 by 720 and then the scale, I up it to 1260p, but you can keep it on default if you want to, but I recommend for higher end systems, 1080p and higher, especially I edit, so I like to have my in-game textures and my resolution be nice and smooth, so you know it looks good in the final project. Resolution scale, keep this on 16 by 16. Uh, upscaling, I don't really fuck with that. Shader mode, you wanna keep it on async. Uh, shader compiled threads, put it on the highest you can put it, or auto, but I keep it on 16 because it makes everything just run better. If it fucks with your CPU, just put it lower, put it on auto, because that'd be the best option for you. Additional settings, I keep vsync on, sometimes could cause tearing, or it will fix your tearing if you, if you'll cause tearing if you don't have it on. I prefer having it on just to make sure everything runs nice and smooth. And I don't, I have a 144 hertz monitor, or a 165, but whatever, it doesn't really matter. And, uh, I run it on 60 still. This just keeps it where it would be at 165, but I have it limiting to 60, so it doesn't really make a difference. I have multi-threaded RSX on and asynchronous texture streaming also on. These might not work good for you, but if uh, RSX makes your game slow, and turn it off but i my cpu likes it so i'm running it the audio io system network none of this shit really matters um what i would say is if you want your audio to sound better make sure buffering is on 100 milliseconds and then uh time stretching and then 75 percent for the threshold because sometimes the in-game audio will chop up and this will prevent that and also make sure these are on like dominic stereo and x audio but i'm pretty sure that's a default you could actually use a mic which is kind of funny, but uh, I don't know, you can do that if you want to. I don't think there's really a purpose for it. These don't matter, um, 
In the advanced tab, you want to make sure that the only one checked is PPU LLVM pre-compilation. Uh, accurate DFMA will be checked anyway, you can't really change that, so that's that. Um, sleep timers accuracy, you want to make sure it's on all timers. Uh, maximum number of spurs threads, you want it to be on unlimited, because, you know, I don't really know why, it just it improves my performance. It's the default to be on unlimited anyway, but if you, if you need to, lower it, but I don't think you will. I keep everything off over here except right depth buffers. It just, uh, I don't know, it, it, I guess, uses UGP a little more, I think. Vulcan's Q scheduler, I'm pretty sure on default it is safe, but, um, I don't know, I never really changed that. This, uh, I keep it on 1. V blank frequency, I keep it on 120, because if you have it on 60, your replay editor will be in 30, because the replay editor and skate parks always half your frame rate. So I put it on 120, so when it halves it, it goes to 60, so everything's smooth. That's a really important setting, guys. Make sure that shit is on, or not on, but on 120. Make sure you apply every time, just so you don't lose anything, and uh, go to emulator. In emulator, I have only automatically start games after boot and prevent display sleep while running games on. Everything else I have off. Custom background I have on, but, you know, it doesn't really matter. Performance overlay I don't have on. LLVM compiled threads, you want to make sure it's all the way up, or just all. Um, that works the best for me. You can, uh, lower this if you want to increase the performance of other applications, but I personally like having it all the way up, so... Because I don't really, you know, when I'm playing emulator, I don't really care about anything else on my PC. Sometimes I might lower it if I'm editing something, so I can, you know, play emulator and, and like, get cinematics, but that's just me. I don't know how many editors are watching this, but, uh, shout out to you if you're an editor. And now the debug tab. This is what you just enabled in that text document. Basically, the only thing you really want to turn on in here is use GPUs, texture scaling, everything should be off. PPU thread count should be two, and this should always be, uh, disabled. That's, that's pretty much it for the settings. Uh, make sure you do apply and save custom configuration. Alright, now that you're done with your settings, um, let's go over the controller. For the controller, it actually kind of varies a little bit. Make sure you go to change custom gamepad configuration or create custom gamepad configuration. That's what it says, I don't know. But make sure, just open up the gamepad configure. You don't really want to fuck with any of these buttons, I mean, unless you have like a specific bumper or trigger thing, or if you want to switch buttons around, I guess you can, but uh, what I want to direct you to is the stick multipliers and the dead zones. If you have stick drift, you want to increase these to whatever size works for you, but I don't really have stick drift that bad, so I keep it lower. For the stick multipliers, I keep my left on one, and this is, make sure, okay, if you have an Xbox controller, make sure you change these. If you have a PS4 or PS3 controller, I'm pretty sure these at default work fine because it's a PS3 emulator and it kind of just goes off of that. But for a Xbox controller, it does not really work one to one. So what you want to do for Skate 3 specifically, I don't know if it's for all games, but for Skate 3, I like to lower my right stick a little bit because my man like it's hard to do manuals on RPC on, on default settings. At least for me and from a lot of other people have told me that doing manuals and doing three tricks and you know doing comp or reverts uh they have issues with for both their sticks i had issues with the higher level because i used to put my left stick on like 1.15 that would cause my dot to go outside of the border which was fucking up my reverts and i wasn't able to do reverts right for a little bit so i recommend just keeping this on one but you can raise it if you want to the right stick i always keep on 0 0.89 or 0 0.9 go any higher than 0 0.91 or 0 0.95 and it starts getting you know back to hard manuals and then 0.88 or lower you get weird uh like infinite pop drops of like every trick which is it's kind of cool but it's kind of also cheating so i like to keep mine on 0.89 because it just feels like the most like console to me and yeah that's really all you gotta really go through for your controller um i always enable or i <laughs> disable my vibration this shit is usually on but i like to turn this shit off because i just I don't like it that much. Everything else is pretty much default for me. Uh, trigger, trigger, trigger thresholds. I have this up. I don't know if it's default up, but sometimes my grabs, I, I accidentally grab because my fingers, like when I'm holding RB, I kind of do that with my trigger. It just serves as a grab, so I like to put this up a little bit. I hold RB instead of clicking it. I know some people click it to do dark catches, but I just hold it. That's me, but you know, people say click your RB. I don't really understand why, but <laughs> that's just, I don't know. Anyway, but yeah, that's the controller settings. That's my controller settings and my personal like recommendations for your controller. And uh, 
yeah before you start your skate 3 i actually left a link down below to an eboot file on which um the eboot file basically makes it so you can use your own skater on party play you can have out of bounds mods you have a no air timer if you fly in the air on your board for too long usually on console you reset but on here you will not and you'll just fly for as long as you need to the out of bounds thing really doesn't affect that many spot battles. I don't think it affects any, actually. I've, I've never had an issue with going out of bounds on a spot battle before, so, you know, if you're worrying about, like, cheating on spot battles, don't worry about it, because, you know, you, you really won't have an issue with that if you're just playing the map normally. But, um, I like using it for trick line clips. Out of bounds trick line clips are fun. It just kind of opens up a new door to the game, which is, which is cool. But, um... Yeah, I'll just show you guys how to install the eBoot. I don't know if you need to close RPCS3 for that, but um, I will just cause. And uh, this is the eBoot right here, so I'm gonna actually navigate back to my RPCS3. Uh, you wanna go to Dev HDD0, and then go to Game, whichever game Skate 3 you have. I found out that on my personal CPU, US version, so BLUS Plus runs way better than bless bless is pretty impossible to run for skate 3 for me but some people it's the opposite so uh yeah figure out which one runs better for you go into the folder of whatever number serial number your skate 3 is mine's blus 30464 so blus 30464 open that Go to user dir or user directory, I think that's what that is. And then there's an eboot file. What you basically want to do is just take the eboot file that I linked in the description below, drag it onto here, replace the file in destination, and then it basically just wrote in a bunch of code into this eboot file, which allows you to do all the things I just listed. All right, now what you want to do is load up your game. From here on out, you're going to need a program called Cheat Engine, or yeah, Cheat Engine, and you're going to have my cheat table that I will also link in the description. There's going to be plenty of links down below for everything in this video. I know I didn't really go over how to install Skate 3 or RPCS3 or any of that, but I just felt like, you know, if you're looking at this video about mods and settings, you're going to probably have the game already, I would think, right? But uh, yeah, so I'm going to link my cheat table and cheat engine and all that down below in the description. Okay, so what you're going to want to do with cheat engine is actually go to load right here and then pull up my cheat engine uh, table my my .ct file um, it's going to be called skate 3 new better lol shasta open that and this basically has all the important mods that i use personally at the top you're going to want to click this button right here and then go to your rpcs3 skate 3 it'll have your fps value and then vulcan or opengl if you're using that but vulcan preferred and then click open keep the address list code list yes you want to click that and uh, you'll have all these default values show up. If you don't have some of the values, it'll say float big end, and then it'll have nothing here. And it, you know, say that for all the float big end ones, um, it'll have literally nothing there. Then you need to install the float big end type. You need to install that float big end end type. How to do that is basically go into the link I linked down below, and it is gonna come up with this GitHub, and you'll see this big lines of code thing right here. And then what you're gonna want to do is just highlight all the 59 lines of code right here. Hold down Control, hit C to copy it. Then head over to your cheat engine. Uh, right click four bytes right here where it says value type. Right click that, and then type or not type. Uh, click on define new custom type auto assembler. Click that. Delete everything in here and paste it. I'm pretty sure that's exactly what was already here, but you know, paste it and click OK. I'm not gonna click OK because I already did it. So uh, then you will have float big end. If it doesn't show up initially, just close out of Cheat Engine, launch it back up, load up the uh, load recent, click this, and then it'll load up my uh, cheat table for you, and you should have all these values here now. So my settings, my individual mod settings for everything. First thing what I do is actually I click active on this stuff all the way down to um i click all the way down to my grip tape right here and then i stop at the hair and i don't really fuck with this shit anymore everything down to the grip tape i pretty much lock on and when you lock something it might open up these ones which you also want to make sure are off as well or not off but active and then uh we're gonna get into the game now so let's just load up all right so as you can see my game is bright as shit right now because i haven't really edited any of the brightness. I do have a reshade on, which kind of fixes my colors and makes them a little bit, uh, you no know, less eyeball piercing. To do the brightness fix, what I like to do is go over to 
emulator or to cheat ten <laughs> cheat engine go to my cheat table and then go to my brightness and change it to 1.75 from 2.5 to 1.75 it basically makes it so as you can see now the game is you know less bright looks a little bit better and then i'm gonna go down my list now basically what i do for my player one and two i always have them as my first one is shasta and then the second one i put as whatever um you know you can just literally put it as like uh, x7 albert i guess all right we got x7 albert and me and then for the one player i always either put it at one or two i'm gonna put it at one if you're playing spot battle because then you only have one person in your game and it's just you and it's it's nice it's really nice um and for one up you always have to have it at two because if you have one player in your one up let's play one up yeah one up let's go yeah and i win let's go yeah all right yeah as you can see that's pretty stupid so uh hop out of this and let's go through the rest of the settings even when i play spot battle i honestly leave this on too because i don't really have issues unless i'm playing like the ditch or mega park where my second skater gets in the way because that still happens for everything else uh online speed you want to put on 40 instead of 41 it makes your game speed up just the tightest bit and it you know makes it feel like online and it um it's honestly just makes it feel nice and smooth a lot faster a lot snappier instead of just that slow motion and then the rest of it uh pedestrians and turn these off so now as you can see um there ain't really nobody around except for the people that are skating but you just turn that off with replay disable l3 icon i turn this on zero it basically makes it so my replay editor has you know nothing here and then i turn the text into nothing and then now it's really just clean brightness 1.75 disable fisheye edges put on zero see it kind of just fully stretched out which is nice ollie height leave it alone fall damage leave it alone camera zoom in i keep it on 75 but you can put it to a fucking a thousand if you want to camera zoom out i put it on 10 to do you know my fisheye angles instead of having to do the glitch now you can just go in and just lower it down to 10 and then you know if you want to put it on like 200 raise it up all the way folks we're going all the way into the shoes bro what the fuck are those all right um black sky you can actually lower this but the default value is 7700 but if you want like really good fps put this on like a thousand it'll literally not render anything outside of where the black sky is it helps with your fps a lot makes the game run a little bit smoother it's also just kind of cool looking sometimes chucks rgb uh, you know these are subjective you can put them to whatever you want um i like putting this up to five and then turning these off i have a red board it kind of looks nice and clean and yeah that's pretty much it for this whole video um i kind of just went over all my settings on skate 3 and everything and how i play the game personally i'm gonna show you off right now that i actually you know load into a game with my name my skater all that shit let's just go to like mega park because i'm playing with x7 albert guys as you can see there's my skater there's the names down there um there's no colors it just shows numbers next to the name which is the only real difference to uh, the online layout and uh, yeah everything's the same pretty much as like normal skate 3 bot battle on party play and easy that's also what the eboot does, does by the way it makes it on easy like no matter what and uh yeah that's pretty much it for this video um if you guys did learn something new from this make sure you drop a like and comment if you have any other questions let me know down below make sure you subscribe to air refract and follow my twitter i'm also going to be actually doing a little q a so make sure you guys go drop some replies to my tweet that i announced my q a with and uh, ask me some questions there i'll link that down in the description and uh yeah i'll see you guys in the next video peace out bye